Hi, this is David Vallade with AltaVista Technology. Recently, the IRS changed some of the rules around how we report our non-employee compensation at the end of the year. Previously, we used the 1099 MISC or miscellaneous, and we used box seven to note all of our non-employee compensation. The law changed, however, and that requires us to make a few updates within the system, and I was going to do that here. So the updates that you make are going to be actually in two parts. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have vendors that had been flagged as 1099 miscellaneous box seven vendors to going forward instead use the new form 1099 NEC short for non-employee comp and in that case it would be box one. So we can do that. There's a few ways to do that. Once I get to the end of this video, however, know that there's another part. So I'm going to focus on just updating the vendors here so that we have them set or tracking information correctly going forward. There is another step. We do have to address moving all the transactions that have been recorded previously with one box to being recorded in another. So first thing we got to do is identify which vendors we want to update. I'll switch my tab here and I can see here I have a list of vendors. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a view. I actually have one made and I'll, and I'll show that. But a, a good thing, probably an underused feature of Sage Intact is we could have any kind of list here. So whether we're talking about a list of vendors or a list of customers or, or so on and so on, we can create a view that has certain attributes. And in this case, I made something called a 1099 miscellaneous box seven. And I did that because I just want to see the vendors that I have to fix. If I pick that, you'll see my screen changes. And I've decided on these columns, but again, I could pick whatever columns I want. So what did I do here? This is something that anyone can do in their system if they have sufficient security. Uh, I'll just go in here and I'll edit my view. What you would do is you would pick the fields that you want to see. And the very least, we do need to see the vendor ID. And I want to see the form type and the box type. Anything else uh, might be interesting for you and you can add that, but really those are the ones I need. And why do I need them? So these are the fields I need if I want to use this view to do an update down the line. So here's my view. There's a few steps here. That's just the columns that we want to show. I'll hit next. I can select the order of the columns here, how I want them to show up left to right. That looks fine here. And here's the big setting that we need to have for our view to work. I've gone in and you hit these little drop downs to see all the different fields that live in this case on a vendor. So I said for this view, I want to see anything with a form type equals MISC and the 1099 box type equals seven. This is really the important thing. I have a few more options here as far as like, do I want to sort the vendors in ascending order? That sounds fine. And then the last is just uh, what do I want to call it? 1099 miscellaneous box seven. That deploy checkbox is helpful if you are making a view and you're not quite done with it. Maybe it's not quite ready for prime time. You don't want to let people see something that wasn't very polished or vetted. You could not have it deployed and then only you, the creator of the view, will have it. But by checking that deploy now, anyone who has security here can share that. And that's great. So I wanted to do that here. So I'll just hit cancel on that. And then this shows up in your list here and you can toggle between what you see. If you're starting from scratch, you'd hit the drop down and say, create a new view and pick those filters that I showed a second ago. All right, so now we wanna change things. Now we have a few ways we could change these vendors. So if I toggle back over in my environment here and I show um, just the vendors that have box seven, if I only had a few, and you can see here, I only have five, you could go in and you could just change the vendor. So you could hit the little edit on the vendor, of course, and you could switch over to the additional information. And here I have clearly the 1099 miscellaneous box seven. That's the thing I want to change. So I'll just click that form type and Sage Intact is updated and they've added that non-employee compensation form, which I'll pick. And then I'll switch over to non-employee comp. That's that. If I only had five or so vendors, I could do that and I would be done. I'll hit save here. But there's a very interesting thing that's going to happen when I hit save this next time. When I save the vendor record, I get this pop-up and it says, how do you want to apply the updates? Do you want to update all the transactions for this vendor or don't do anything with the previous transactions? Now, you might be tempted to pick this first option and it is valid, you could, but you have to do so understanding what it's going to do. This dialogue here says update all transactions for this vendor. Now. There is a, the option here within Sage Intact to control when you enter AP bills, which transactions are 1099 trackable. What do I mean by that? So I'm gonna leave this tab here. I'm not gonna answer that question, but if I switch to this other tab, you'll see I have a bill that I started 
for Dave Go. And if I scroll down, you'll notice in my environment here, I have entered an expense. And you can see that checkbox for 1099, and it's going to go to miscellaneous. So during the course of a year, you may allow your accounts payable clerks to deselect that checkbox and then say, you know what, this one line, this was not subject to 1099. But then this other one, if I add another line here, um, this other one, I'll pick the same department here, different dollar amount, and this one may be subject to 1099. So this is all working. That's a configuration you could have. And depending on what your industry is and what you're doing, you may have times where you override the system and you say, okay, I'm going to have a transaction where I may or may not have a 1099. So the, ten, the vendor is set up as a 1099 vendor. I have a default type there all set to go. And it will, uh, by default, mark that box, but I'm going to let the user override that. So with that in mind, let's go back to that setting I had a second ago, update all transactions. If I do that, even boxes that had not been selected as a 1099 transaction will be updated to have 1099 information. So when in doubt, uh, pick this second option. And what that means is we're not going to update the history. Now that does require us to do another change. That's why this breaks up into two steps. But if you know your environment and you know that, oh, we don't actually override for this particular vendor, or you could disable the ability to override that checkbox in your setting. And in that case, then you could safely pick this top option because you know that in your environment, everything has been put safely to <laughs> the 1099 miscellaneous and you want to move it in its entirety over to the 1099 and EC. So be careful with this one. There's not a right or wrong necessarily, but when in doubt, I would do the second option, but know that that means you have more to do. All right, so that's valid. I could do, and I hit cancel on this, and I'll hit cancel on my change, and I'm back to where I had my list of vendors here. Now, if I don't wanna do that uh, one at a time update, how might I proceed, right? How might I move on? Well, I would make my view, as you see here, to see just my 1099 uh, box seven vendors. And there's this option in the upper right to do an export. And if I hit the drop down, I can export like we can in most windows in Sage and Tech to some format, but I love this option, CSV for import. So if I pick that, system says, how do I want to handle that? And I'm going to, uh, I'll just open the file in Excel. And here I can see my vendors. Now what's important here is I have a vendor ID, I don't actually need these other fields here. Uh, so I'm just going to delete those. You can always do that. So here I see my 1099 type and my 1099 box. And I get to uh, do a copy and paste right here in Excel. So I will say now going forward, these are going to be NEC, paste that down, and these are going to be box one. And there we go. Now we have our file all ready to go. And I'll just save that off and import it. And we're ready to go. Now that I'm in my environment again, I'm going to go ahead and hit hit import. And all I have to do is browse out to my file, so my vendor update, open that, and then import. If this is a super big list of vendors that you are updating, this process offline is a great option because the system will uh, email me once it's done. Once that's imported, and I won't do it in this demo, I'd have all my vendors updated, but I'm gonna leave them uh, as they are for one more example that I'll show. So let's recap where we would be at this point. We would have updated all of our vendors so that if they had been set up as a 1099 miscellaneous vendor, they will going forward instead be a 1099 non-employee comp vendor going to a different box. Again, we still have to update the history, that's great, but there's one extra step that I would like to do here, and that is, prevent my users from accidentally adding yet another vendor with the wrong form. So what I've done here is uh, I have created a smart rule and I've done this in a package and this package is going to be something that is downloadable that you can get from our website. So if I come in here, I'm gonna go over to my platform services and I'm gonna hit the little plus symbol on a custom package. I'm gonna go browse out to find the package I made previously and hit import and that's that. So I'm gonna go over to my vendor list and show what I've just changed. So now if I go to pick this vendor here, this, I've left that as a 1099 miscellaneous seven. This is something that uh, we want to change in the future. And if I just hit save on that record, I have this set to give me a warning. It says this vendor is set for 1099 miscellaneous box seven. The IRS changes may require an NEC instead. And I have this as a clickable link actually. So if your user clicks that, it takes them to the IRS website where they can see a little bit more about that. I'll go back to my screen. Now I've had this set up as a warning. So if the user thinks that that is a valid selection and they do want to keep it that way, they can click save again and everything is fine. 
but it does give that warning to the user. I have that particular smart rule set up to give the warning to a user whenever they make a new vendor or whenever they update an existing vendor. And again, it is a warning, so the user can proceed, but it gives them that chance to uh, check with themselves to make sure that they didn't make the wrong selection. It's always fun when the IRS changes the tax laws, and I hope this shows how you can update your vendors so that you can have them compliant going forward. Keep up with our website to see more videos about how we can change the history that we have for all those vendors and how we can get through a year-end together. Thanks, everybody.